The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Morning, everybody. Tommy O'Brien. We got the markets in negative territory to kick off the Friday action. Dow currently negative 140 points. S&P is negative by 10. NASDAQ negative by 30. We have tariffs. We have maybe a little trade war action going on and market with a little fear. And we got our man Basil Chapman in the saddle for the Friday program. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Good. Well, uh, started off, great workshop last night. I, of course, was here. I'm sure your subscribers appreciate it. A solid hour and a half. Maybe we'll talk some more about it uh, this hour, but that was fantastic, man. I appreciate you doing a great job, as always. Thank you. So what, uh, what are you seeing in this market this morning, Basil? Always interesting. I mean, so, like, let's just, before you have, you know, the fundamental news in terms of the U.S. slapping $50 billion of tariffs on Chinese goods, and within the span of, I think it was literally 27 minutes, you had China coming out and immediately saying they'll be correlating um, response, as in right back. And then the question is, well, what's the third move, right? And how many levels deep do you want to go, and where's the next move? So seeing a little bit of fear in the markets, uh, but... On a relative basis, we've been doing so well. I mean, VIX still under 13 on a relative basis. Things, things are going all right for a Friday. What are you looking at this morning? So there are a couple of things that I'm looking at. Uh, one of the reasons why I want to do the webinar last night, and in fact, there's still time for anyone who's listening would like to uh, uh, become a, at least listen to the webinar. They can become a subscriber for a month. Uh, they get a money-back guarantee. But most importantly, I think it's relevant for the next period so it's not like you have to get it today that webinar that webinar was really looking at the bigger the bigger scheme of things and within that context my my inclination over the last i'd say the last month was to think that this is a period where we were going to see some core changes in what was working and working extremely well and what is probably not going to work as well in the coming at least three months. And these three months will be very important because that probably dictates the parameters that we'll be looking for through the rest of the year. So within that context, the dollar was most important. So the dollar screened yesterday to the upside, took out the left side high that was really important, tested there was a 95.15 high in the dollar. I'm showing the weekly chart right in the middle. Daily is on the left, weekly in the middle. Monthly on the right, I'll get rid of the 120-minute chart. No, we'll keep the 120-minute chart. Um, but you'll see that there, I've got 95.15 printed here, and that was back in the end of 2017. There was a little double top at 95.15 in the cash. This is the DXY uh, index, the dollar index. Comes plunging down to 88.25, makes a cup formation, and then yesterday takes out the peak C that was made in the Chapman wave back three weeks ago that was a high of 9581 uh, 9501 03 didn't see those numbers that were covered up a little bit 9503 we took it out so in the in my work what that says on the very short term yep there's a chance there's a little bit of a double top here but it's excellent action you need the technicals to actually catch up because the, re, the decline in the dollar from 9503 back in the 29th of may through to, to the low that was made yesterday morning at a trough D in the Chapman wave at 93.19. That says, for me, and this is what I discussed last night in the webinar, you need to see, based both on the daily and the weekly, you need to see a push into the 96s that holds on the daily chart for about two or three sessions. What it would do then is establish that it is not fearful of that repellent zone at 95.15. It is now in new territory. It's investigating that new territory and is going to try to find a way to turn that 95.15 to maybe the 94, 93 area into key support. And what I'd said is if the dollar can hold and one closing week, you can see a close above 96. That sort of sets in motion 
the fact that you've got higher highs and higher lows, now you've got a new thing going on. The dollar becomes very important. So that's one thing. The other is if you're looking at the high tech area and you can go to the XLK, well, the high tech uh, area based on the, the uh, S&P, this is the S&P select um, tech sector spider okay. fund. It's, it's screamed to new highs and now it's just bumping into a lot of resistance here. If that starts to, if at 71.50 with a high three days ago of uh, 72.43, if within a week, I'd say by the, by next Friday, yeah, within about a week, if the market pulls, the XLK pulls back, and the following week you suddenly see it's trading under 70, all of a sudden you've got a digestive phase going on in the in the high tech sector, which has been very important. And just finally, there's bonds. If the the bond yield has been holding in the higher range. The TLT Lehman iShare 20-year 20, 20 Treasury Bond ETF, if it starts to climb, it's at 120.87. If you, you see it now going to, in the next week and a half to two weeks, if it goes to the 123 or higher area and the market has now pulled back, the Dow is under 24,800, the S&P is down uh, in the 20, I'd put in the 2730s. For 40s, that would say that money is coming out of the equities, the, the, the volatility of equities into the so-called safety of bonds. And that's why I think this is really a critical period. Crude oil also is part of the equation. And if you look, um, if you look at the different sectors that are overbought, they could quite easily be a pullback, even if it's just a digestive pullback. That for me is really key. So that's one. Of the, that's what I'm really looking at. You covered a few good topics, man. In terms of, I mean, bonds. So I mean, quite a week in terms of what we had going on. Bonds. We of course had the Fed decision on Wednesday. We Correct. raised yep. rates, and bonds undeterred. Right. I mean, even the next day, you had bonds um, trading up in price. In terms of how does that react? Right. In terms of you have a tightening um, yield spread as well, and. Then yesterday, of course, with the ECB, they're going to be ending their bond buying. So they have three more months. They're not going to be hiking rates for a solid year. But that end of that stimulus in three months, and man, that euro, quite a move, man. I was pulling, I mean, it's just staggering in terms of the euro was trading a 118.60, and uh, it's under 116 now. I mean, that's just a remarkable move in the span of a few hours, basically. And of course, the, the effect it has on the dollar, the effect it has on many markets uh, as it plays out. And then you have the NASDAQ at all-time highs yesterday. You have Netflix at all-time highs. Uh, Amazon can't stop trading up, it seems, on a daily basis. But yeah, uh, they are at some serious multiples when you put that across. And, and those technology stocks, it's, it's quite a story, man. I mean, I'm watching you pull up Amazon right now. We're in the 1700s. Pretty remarkable number across the board. And it's almost like just, and I know you love, uh, you know, fundamental stories. You look at just, um, you know, uh, societal wide indicators in terms of the buildings and how it goes. And on the Amazon front, it seems like I can't go a day without two stories being in front of my face somehow on Amazon. I was reading one today about Whole Foods and just the infrastructure they are building to make sure that the Whole Foods CEO is still in place. But Jeff Bezos has his people at the helm as well, making sure that they are in line with how they are planning for the future with Whole Foods. And you can see that in Whole Foods when you go there. There's yes, a they, and, and that is not surprising, right, that he would have a hand in how that is going. Dow down 166, S&P's negative 10. Come on back, folks. Larry we'll be right Pesimento back. Larry has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters.
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tommy O'Brien. I'm with Basil Chapman. We got markets in negative territory. Dow now down about three quarters of a percent, trading negative 182. S&P's negative by 12, almost half a percent. And with those S&P's in mind, we got a great caller. We're going to go to John from Philly. John, good morning. Good morning, Tommy, and hello, Basil. How we doing, man? Uh, I'm doing very well. I wanted to uh, ask uh, a question of Basil, please, about his Chapman Wave technique. Uh, I'm applying it to the S&P index currently. And just by way of background, um, Basil, of course, you uh, you recall I've been your student since 2006, and uh, I uh, collaborated very closely with uh, another student of yours, Bob from Saratoga, in defining trading techniques uh, using the Chapman Wave. Anyway, with that as background, I ask this question, Basil, on the Chapman Wave count. Can you explain to me and your audience the theory that you developed uh, describing why uh, rally phases extend uh, to Chapman Wave labels C, D, E, F, and G, but no higher what that means and where that came from, please? Um, John, there's there's an evolvement that goes on when one is doing technical analysis and, and studying it and also developing techniques. And it's really a, a testing. It is a testing of what works and what doesn't. So I'm not going to take too much time now because uh, this is uh, with uh, with Tommy. To, in my in my show at noon, I'll go, uh, go in a little bit more detail. But let me let me just say that I found over the years that in the notation of the Chapman wave, I can go to a peak A, a peak B, C, D, E, F, and G. But there's no such thing as an H, because when you get to the next highest peak, I found that I had to go back and see where either I was wrong or that there's something else that's changed and that there was now a new notation. That's where I developed the, what I call the alternate count. And if you're looking at the S&P, you'll see that on the 11th of June at 2790.21, 20, 
That was leg F slash C. Why did I say F? Because the technicals were still very strong, and we had made a peak D. That's the one that's most important back on the 22nd of May at 2742.24. And what happened was it extended higher, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss a count, but the technicals were still strong, and I said, I'm anticipating there'll be a leg D. Why would it be a D? Because when you get uh, a C, it automatically, the next letter will be D. When you get an F and the next letter is G, it, the G gets negated because I've got to that D, which is always the important uh, peak that we're, we're looking for. So the other reason why I, I learned about the G, especially the G slash C, is that very often you make the G, especially if there's a good chance that it's still acting quite well, it can pull back, make a cup formation, and just nominally go to that slightly higher peak that gives you the D, and then it's all done, and then you can be pulling back after that. So it was a trial and error process, and eventually I said, yep, there's no such thing as an H either on the way down or the way up. G is what you've got to look for, and it's incredible how many times G is actually a very serious turning point. Uh, but I've also learned over the years to not ignore the fact that if the technicals are still strong, you might get that one little extra peak, and that negates the G, because then in comes the D. I hope that answers in some way what we're looking at. I'll try to go through it a little bit more in my hour at noon today. Well, thanks so much, and uh, Tom, we appreciate you doing the show, sir. John, we always appreciate the call, man, and we appreciate you in that den as well, for sure, man. You have a great Thank weekend. You. Thanks, John. Thank you, John, for all you do. Okay, and we're going to jump to Ari in Arcadia. Ari, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Basil. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. What are we going to look at this morning, Ari? Uh, Basil and I have been working on RGLD probably for about 15 years, maybe maybe even longer. Look at this. Oh, we, long, got, we got John from time. Philly talking about 2006, and we got Ari from Arcadia going back 15 years. Okay, perfect. All right, dive into it. Here we go. So what are we, what are we talking about with the GLD, Ari? RGLD, we were talking, Basil and I were talking that we're coming into a congested area, which he called resistance. And I'm, I still think we're in it. And looking at the monthly and looking at the weekly, I would say we probably go up to 95 and then make a correction. What's your feeling, Basil? Uh, we are looking at this particular moment at uh, RGLD. So this oh, okay, is very, RGLD. Okay, yes. perfect. Thank so you. So this is very interesting because um, I actually hadn't looked at RGLD for a, maybe a, about a week. Uh, I was looking at other stocks. Most importantly, it's so fascinating that you should bring this up because it made what I call a rogue wave, and that was at a PG. What John was talking about, and I'll talk about this more in the next, in my hour at noon, in my uh, uh, Tiger Technicians hour. So what we're in right now, you probably have it as well. We're in a, in a D, whoops, did I, is that an E or a D? Uh, remember, you've got to count every single peak, 92, 97. So this is, this is a leg, leg E today. Is that what you get in your daily chart? Uh, did I lose Ari? I'm not sure. Ari, are you still there? Yeah, I'm Oops. here. Yeah. Okay. I, I, get, probably... I get an E there, but we're close enough, Basil. E, you're right. So we're at a peak E if there's no new recovery high today in RGLD. RGLD, Royal Gold. Fascinating because the MACD is good, not nearly as good as it was when it made that peak F <coughs> back in um, the 18th, the week, yeah, 18th of, of April. And the stochastic is actually a little higher. The unbalanced volume is good. This is holding really well, but it's hugging the nine-period moving average support, and that's at about 91.70. Also, you've got a leg D going up in the – and it's, this is – Tom keeps talking about this. It's just so interesting that some of the stocks have ignored the fact that the dollar has gone much higher, that gold hasn't gone anywhere. The gold miners – have actually, some of the stocks have done very well, and this is one of them. So Ari's talking about a potential double top. I'm still anticipating that RGLD is going to make a higher high above the week of the 8th of September high of 94.39. That was a peak F in the Chapman wave in the weekly. Comes plummeting down at the 94s. It goes all the way down to 78.25, week of 29th of December. So you got your peak A, you pull back. You got your peak B, higher, higher high. 
high, high peak C. Now you're in leg D. But the weekly chart is 89 to 88 is very strong support. So Ari, um, in terms of positioning in Royal Gold, let's just say right now, you say to me, what would you do about buying, selling or holding Royal Gold? I would say hold it, keep your core position on a trading position, just watch it closely, wouldn't do anything today. But the real key is how does it hold the low that was made a few days ago of 90.37? That's going to be key because if it closes under 90, there could be a pullback, a little bit deeper pullback. And that's the way I think about it. Okay. Perfect. Well, we appreciate the call, Ari. We hope you have a great Friday, man, and thanks for contributing to the show this morning. Thank you, Ari. Okay. Come on back, folks. Markets in negative territory. Basil and I will be right back in three minutes. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman this Friday morning. We got the Dow accelerating a bit to the downside now, down 211 points. S&P's off 14, NASDAQ off 34 as well. Yeah, so that 
gold market, pretty interesting. And I, you know, Tom and I do the program every 10. He does his gold report, of course. We're completely immersed in, in gold coverage, but it's been very interesting in terms of the miners, how they've reacted with gold struggling. Um, it's been hanging around that 1300, 1310, 1295 price for a while. And those gold equities haven't been hit as hard. And even on the action today, I mean, yesterday on that initial ECB move, we had gold spiking to 1313, I believe. And now we're a solid $30 almost off of that level, trading at 1286 currently in that gold contract. And not the type of devastation that you could see in some of those, even Royal Gold. You know, Royal Gold, I think I saw it basing down about 1.2% maybe one, on the day. 1.4 1. right now, down okay. thirty-two at 9198 But I just wanted to hold this chart up here. This is the monthly chart of Royal Gold, RGLD, trading at 9206 in, in the methodology that I use, we're always looking for a D. A D, the fourth highest peak, is where other things can happen. Well, it turns out that peak C is made uh, in September of last year at 94.39. If you're looking at this cup formation that's formed in the monthly chart, if you, under every other circumstance, if you said to me, hey, there's royal gold that's trading up near its all-time, near the 100.84 all-time high, it's trading in 92. Uh, what do you think of it? And where do you think the dollar would be? I'd look at this and I'd say, okay. Uh, and no, where would you think gold would be? Where do you think the dollar would be? I'd look at this chart and I'd say, well, I think gold must be up in the 1370s and the royal gold looks fantastic. Dollar should be retesting its lows in the 90 to 88 area. No, this, car, this chart is saying uh, it is ignoring what's going on in in the other part of the world it is obviously it must be doing well in earnings or something it's holding like a rock and it looks like it will get that leg d i've got a left side right side price time match that says by august it should have broken to a new high and start testing uh, up in the high 90s so this is holding very well up at this up until this point so you're absolutely correct gold stocks um not all of them but a number of them are ignoring the fact that gold has been it ha, gold hasn't broken down but it's really just in a trading band in the lower range but this is fascinating i mean that's fa you spoke about the euro um look at this the euro itself um the monthly chart went above the 200 period moving average at 1.21 then it pulled back and now it's just broken over the last two months it's broken the low of november of 1.155 and you can see this arch formation in the weekly chart underneath the 200 period moving average and the daily chart made a peak D. Remember, we like to see those Ds and it's made a peak D by pulling back very sharply. But euro dollar hasn't taken out this left side low of the other day of the 29th. So I think this is a very critical couple of days. The reason why we went short at the peak D in the Dow and, the, and we reversed from the long side to the short side is because that gives up, gives me a little bit of a risk reward for, for my subscribers because I haven't yet got a sell signal, not even a sell signal. In, I hadn't up until last night in the in the actual price of the Dow because it needed to close decisively under the nine period moving average for me to put my down arrow. If it closes anywhere near where it is now, down 252 points, I will put my down arrow in. But I really have to still wait for the MACD to cross negative. Stochastic at 82% has to go under 80%. So it's just like the gold and the dollar. There's a, there's a bifurcated market in many regards. And if you look at the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, look at this. It's down a dollar $1.10 at 176.49. It's within fractions of its 177.89 uh, high um, of yesterday. Yeah, I was going to say within the last 24 hours, right, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. That monthly chart, I mean, just staggering in terms of the NASDAQ. It just won't stop, man. And, you know, Facebook, we had commented before, quite a buying opportunity even just on Facebook when they were dealing with the woes of the security. I mean, talk about just recoiling and plowing higher in, in the span of no time back to all-time highs, let alone the likes of Netflix, Amazon, where they have had almost barely a pullback. I mean, you had some pullbacks in February when the market was rocking. But in terms of their own equities, you know, you saw Facebook suffering on its own. But those stocks, there is nothing to stop 
the, the likes. And yeah, I see you have Facebook now. So I mean, look at that 150, Basil. I mean, we're up almost 33% from that number in April on a company like Facebook. It's remarkable that a company like Facebook can, can appreciate that much that quickly on the heels of the bad publicity they've been getting. So this is interesting. I believe we've also got a D in the Facebook daily chart. They're gonna and get... that monthly chart went to a new high, to a higher high than the 195.32 yes. high that was made earlier this year. And that's really still, I'm going to call this a leg B to the upside. And that's one of the reasons why I think that you've got to be careful in just having a broad kind of, oh my God, the market's just tanking. Yeah, there's certain sections that are tanking. We haven't had anything yet that is in the, on the news front that is going to, has impacted yet the high techs. And of course, Facebook basically is also a high tech company. Sure. So when all of a sudden the news turns against them, I think to really pull back sharply, it's got to be a news-related uh, event, something that really says, uh-oh, this is a real problem for earnings, because uh, the market generally, unless it's going to affect earnings, the market just shrugs off everything. Right, for sure, because it's really right. only when you hear a story that might not be related directly to earnings, like, for instance, the security woes, where the question was, will that factor into the earnings? And, and I think the market has recoiled and decided, no, it's not, not as of yet. Um, people aren't canceling their accounts in woes. And the more important factor is that advertisers are not canceling their ad buys at all, which is where, which is where the market makes its decisions. Uh, just back to the GLD for two seconds, Basil, because it's so interesting. So I just have a chart of gold, the GLD, uh, up here on a daily basis. And you know we've been consolidating for a while, but this move today, we're in we're in new territory right now in terms of uh, we're going back to we're at lows of the year, and, and and it's remarkable when you get that type of move. And gold held up well yesterday, but and I say held up well yesterday in the face of of the dollar. Yes, for the you know euro getting its butt kicked and the dollar just going gangbusters, and gold held held up well. But some of that may be factoring into today, and it is, if you're a gold bull, um, this will be interesting to see how it reacts, like you're so talking about. This is a critical phase right now in terms of we're underneath, and we're going back to May 15th was when we got the original huge downdraft in gold, and we've been hanging out. We're almost at a month, right? What is today's date? It is perfect. June 15th on the dot. Um, on the dot so a right. full month. And so now we're below those levels, yeah. There's one thing that I must mention. There's a pattern that I was going to talk about last night in my webinar, but it would have taken too much time. I'd already drawn it in now offhand. Oops, I can't think of whether I actually spoke about the GLD per se, but I'll mention it when we get back. Perfect. That's a one -to -one I, I like the to tease. The I like the tease. Yeah. Everyone can hang out. <laughs> we got three-minute breaks. That's all we take at TFNN, folks. We're going to be coming right back, and let's see where that market is now. As we hang there, Dow now negative 276 points, folks, down 1.1%. Come on back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, 
copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. We get markets in negative territory and seeing a little bit of an acceleration. You get the Dow off more than a full percent at one point. And staying with our gold talk, Basil, now we're, we now have a 12.82 handle and, and session lows as we speak. So um, there's a particular chart formation that I talk about every once in a while. It isn't, doesn't happen often, but it's just once in a while. It's the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. But within that context, what I years ago figured out was that you can sometimes get what I call a propeller shaft where there's a sideways consolidation like a rectangle rather than just this little oval. It just goes on for a while. But if you break down this is lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, you can just see it many things here on the daily chart of GLD. If it takes out and holds underneath the left side low, in this case, if the GLD 122.01, if it holds underneath for more than two bars, in this case, two days, and doesn't close back above that 122 level, and right now it's at 121.19, you can anticipate close to or a one-to-one -one move to the downside. And that would go from 125.59, it's called a 125.60, down to 122, 120, that's what's 30 something points. And then that would take from the 123.86 area, that would go down further. And that would take you very close to the lows of, wow, um, 117.40 was the low in December of 2017. So this is my, my concern was how deep will the gold go? right at this stage, in other words, between yesterday, today, and sure. Monday, if it broke. And so for the GLD, now that's different to the gold contract. Yes. I'll show you the gold contract. Gold contract right now has, a le well, it's different only in the pattern. It's just a little bit tighter in the actual gold contract. And here we've taken out the law of 1281.2 in gold. You're at 1284. And what's interesting, are you dealing with the delayed possibly there, Basil? Because gold. Yeah, oh, I have, I've got a 15 minute delay. And so that's I all. I mean, 15 right minutes, now. the market's flying right now in that gold. Just to put, yeah, we're now at 1281, just to update. As we said, so 1281.85 uh, is, is um, where we currently sit at. Okay, so the, my gold contract, the number, I hardly ever put numbers on it because it gets, it, it's a continuous contract. So it gets smoothed out. So that, that 1281 is actually now. 12, 1286 was the low. Okay. So you, we way below that, and that says be careful because now in gold, the actual contract itself, it's breaking long-term support in the in the monthly chart. You see this 
You see this trend line right here? I have to move it again because it gets smoothed out. Sure. I'm going to be I'm going to be as strict as possible. Usually I take the body of the candle if it's important and the lows. We've taken that out. So to be kind, I'm going to be putting it down at the edge of every okay. wick. And Those that tails, says, sure. Yeah, so that says you can go to 1260. Okay. Um, it's quite so a number. Well, quite a number, yeah. 1260. I mean, but, but keep, in, keep in mind, it is still within just a trading band in the monthly chart. I mean, okay. it's really not breaking down. Sure. It is a, a short term basis. I just wanted to put it in context to say that gold technically is still within the trading band. Now it's starting to take out the near term support levels. That's important. But the monthly chart is saying, yep, there's an arch formation. So far, this holding the arch. No, next well. week's going to be interesting, like you say, because uh, with the type of destruction in the last 24 hours, $30 in gold, yeah, it's going to be important to see whether that can get a bid under it, because if we continue to trade $30, $40 to the downside from here, we'll even be below that. I mean, we're only going to be $20 from 1260 uh, as of right now. So, and hopefully uh, for those bulls out there, they're going to need a little action next week. Uh, and as your dad says, this is gold and it is Friday. Right. Oh, listen, when I, <laughs> I saw that chart this morning and I kind of cracked up um, because it is amazing how it moves and, and it almost seems too easy sometimes, Basil, right? As in, you know, huge currency action yesterday. We're coming yeah. into a Friday. You have tariff and trade war talks on top of things. Uh, and of course, time. gold yeah. reacts dramatically, right? All right, we got a call. We got our man Paul from Henderson, Nevada. Paul, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Basil. Happy Friday. Good Tuesday. morning. Happy Friday, man. How's, how's beautiful Henderson, Nevada doing this morning? It's doing great. Actually, the weather is not, um, it's my first summer here, and it's, it's a little bit cooler than, than normal, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. Oh, boy. You're in Boston as well. 105, and it's great weather. Oh. 105. At least you got low humidity, man, because we're coming into some some humid times in Florida. But we can't complain, man. We got it made. We got beautiful winters. You, you, you get the good with the bad. And if the bad is a little bit of humidity in the summer, you grin and bear it and you make it through it. But we got some humidity coming in for sure. Uh, Paul, what are we going to look at this morning? So I wanted to have uh, Basil give me um, his analysis on IQ. Um, Otherwise known as a rocket ship. But go ahead. No. Wow. <laughs> so. Paul, have you been following this for a while? Do you own it? So I entered, uh, I've been day trading it a lot, um, but I entered yesterday at um, 35.90. Not bad. And usually I would just hold it for one day, but it looks so good. It closed at the highs that I, I kept it. And but I'm starting to get a little nervous. It's getting a little extended. And what is what IQ, Paul? Yeah, what, yeah. what is this? Is this a crypto stock? Is this an equity? What, what is IQ? Just as we dive into the chart. No, it's an equity. It's an internet. I believe it's a Chinese. Uh, a Chinese okay, company. just a general idea what we're looking at. Oh, cool. Okay, okay, that makes sense. A Chinese because technology it, oh, stock. You want some yeah, volatility? Here we go. It's up five percent. We're up two points at forty-two fifty-three, when in fact we are down uh, almost one percent in the in the market. So this is very interesting. What I'm going to, you know, you, you. So let's call it your gut feeling that you would actually this time like to hold it over the weekend. I, I'm kind of with you because it's even the 120-minute the chart is very strong. And the fact that it's ignoring what's going on is really important. But there's a really a, a much more simple way to do that. Paul, why don't you take some profits and let the rest hold over the weekend? Because if it oh, acts spectacularly on Monday, you're going to make even more money. And if it tanks because of whatever it is over the over the weekend, whatever is said, you've already taken off some money and you're prepared. That's a, that's an easier way to do it. But what I am looking at, if you were looking at uh, um, IQ is the symbol, if you were looking at this as a, a longer term position play, I would say this is something to keep in mind because keep, I would say to you, keep day trading. Wait two weeks. Let's see how this whole thing resolves. And then I think you can treat this as a longer term play if it can pull back to the th where it was just two days ago, back to the 30, 36, 34 area. I would look at it as maybe positioning for a more intermediate term play. But yes, I, I like it. This is a fabulous looking stock. 
but it's an IPO. In other words, it's only been out four months. So to it put out, and I just, Bez, I just want to give some fundamental uh, information on this. So right. I pulled it up. It's a Chinese streaming company, and they were originally split off from Baidu. That's where this company came from. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so uh, they split off from the company from Baidu in March, and that's where uh, IQ came from. So, I mean, to talk about that, and that lends a little bit of legitimacy, and I think yes. the market cap on this right now is, you're talking about tens of billions. I mean, I pulled it up real quick. I think we're at like $30 billion market cap. Are they cap. still connected to Baidu, or was it a complete uh, I think it was a complete spinoff, as okay. it its own it's its own equity at this point. Okay. Paul, can you come on back with us after the break? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect, hang tight. Tom. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman, Paul from Henderson. We'll be right back, folks. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Faker Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. We got our man Paul from Henderson on the line. So Tom is not in office, but he's watching and he's sending me pictures from his Bloomberg of the IQ stock. So it's interesting. Just a couple tidbits. Uh, they have some serious revenue. So 2017, they took in 17 billion. 2018, they're looking for 24 billion. 2019, they're looking at 33 billion. And as far as Baidu, Baidu owns 20% of that company. So they are publicly traded. Baidu with about one fifth of the company in their own in their own sector. So Basil, I see you got that 120 minute chart up there. Yes, so that, I'm gonna change my answer just a little bit. I, that's the reason why I asked you, does it still have a connection to Baidu? Definitely. To me, that is, your, that is your cash resource 
that is a really good thing for this company. Yeah, so, when I saw that pop up, I said, okay, that's a that's a legitimacy right there, right? Yes. Great to have that knowledge. Now, what I am going and to they say do is massive Paul, volume. I mean, today it's already thirty million shares. So I bet. So that's what I want to talk about, Paul. If you've got a moment, I wanted to say to you, you're about to change your strategy, which has worked for you fantastically, by suddenly going at the all-time high to decide, uh oh, I want to I want to hold this through the weekend because there could be even bigger gains. I'm recommending, and I often do this on my show, I, we give a little psychological thing here. This is exactly the moment where you must stick to your regime as, as dearly as you can. But what I am going to say to you, if it's, it's at 42.58, if it is higher than 42.40 near the close, I would take off two-thirds and keep a third okay. if you can do that, rather than what I said, a half and a half. Why? Because this is that emotional part that's just gotten the better of you. I don't want you to change your philosophy until you've practiced the new philosophy for a period of time. Paul, so nice to hear from you on Friday, man. I hope you have a great weekend and thanks for the call. Likewise, gentlemen, have uh, a good one. You too, Bye -bye. man. Thank you, Paul. Basil, thanks so much for the show. And folks, Basil did an amazing workshop last night. Go to his newsletter, opening call, sign up. You'll be watching that archive right after the show. Basil, have a great weekend, a great show. Thanks so much. You too. Thank you, Tommy. Have a great weekend, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.